Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play LSD. I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and in our last episode, I found myself linking around maps that I was already in, which was generally quite disorienting. I mean, hopefully today will be better. We also got to see a really peaceful video clip that I don't really remember seeing. But I did some looking up, and I did indeed see it before, right at the end of episode 26. I mean, I don't know that with any kind of recall, I just went back and looked through the old videos. Thankfully, I didn't make the same jokes then as I did now. I mean, that's always been one of my worries, that I'll end up just repeating catchphrases, gags, and stories every time I see something similar. I worry it'll become stale and like... Okay, I had this friend when I lived in the south, he was like a little doll. You know, you pull the string and one of five stories would fall out, you know? And like, for the first five days, he was a great friend. Really interesting. And then day six through ten, you kind of realize, oh, oh. And then by the end of the year, you were just ready to upgrade to friend 2.0, because I'm a terrible person like that. But so was everyone else when I lived in the south. So what do you want? But it was all right, because we lived in Green Hill, and this was around the time that Sonic 1 had come out, so I got to tell everyone that I lived in Green Hill Zone, and I was the coolest person. In my mind. Probably less so in reality. Alright, take me away, mystery door, to a magical world of white cubes. Oh, yeah, the game's doing this thing, isn't it? Am I going to fall through the floor this time? Oh, yep, there we go. Man, I really hope that I've not rendered the white room uninhabitable. I mean, not that it's the end of the world, because it's not like anything particularly happens in there, but it's a shame that one of the rooms has just stopped playing. And I bet I could turn that into an alien theory if I wanted to, but I don't think I will right now. I'm just going to hit this here button and continue with our journey through the world of dreams. And I'm going to continue talking in this weird, kind of calm voice for a bit, because we're listening to this music again. I think this is going to be a good video, like, if this weird ambient wailing's going on. I mean, I have quite a lot of music in my playlist that's this, and I'm surprised that very little showed up in the video titles for Jade Cocoon. Oh, and I can hear John T. Ox, but I don't know where he is. I'm almost done remaining still so I can get a good rip of this music for later. And, well, now that I am done, let's continue on our quest to find him. Where you at, Steakhouse? I don't know where some of these affectionate nicknames come from, but I do get a kick out of them. I especially like Dust Bunny from Jade Cocoon. I can't be nostalgic for things I've only just finished, can I? Is that how this works? Right, one of my dad's favorite jokes. What did they long for before nostalgia? And it's kind of weird because he's usually more of a fan of silly word plays. You know, I went to catch some fog, but I missed. That sort of thing. This is something I very quickly <laughs> became familiar with when I'm studying Japanese. There are so many words that sound the same as other things, or that are words for other things for no adequately explored reason. So you can see where their love of bad puns come from. Policemen don't like herons, that sort of thing. Oh, I like you, so I'm going to run after you and catch you. Please do not be a trap. Because that's what I'd do. I'd put a guy in the middle distance for you to chase after, and then attack you while you're focused on that. Oh, did you hear that? We chased her for so long that the running sound effect faded and re -looped. Yeah, there we go. Always worth it. Although what would have been nice would be to follow her for as long as I can and see where she goes. I mean, I know that the Buddhas and the Tengu just run into the skybox and vanish. You think she'd do the same? Almost certainly yes, but I need to observe. I'll put it on my to-do list. But I don't know how well that's going to work out, because it contains three entries thus far. They are all things that I have done, and none of them have had the effect they are meant to have. Also, nice work on navigating there, Andy. That was a stellar job. Ooh, but I'm in this room. This doesn't happen very often. And 
it gives me an excuse to talk about something that's next to my to-do list in my notes. So this apartment is full of cages. And this idea shows up in the Dream Diary, upon which this game is based. June 2nd, 1988, talks about how there are men with whips in the apartment upstairs, and how the apartment's full of cages, which creates a very deviant atmosphere. I don't know how long that note has been on my list of topics, but now I can cross it off. And because of that, I'm going to go back to the apartments. Man, I don't know if I've mentioned you guys, but I love this kind of music. I mean, I'm not much of a musical snob. I like all kinds of crazy junk. But I do like this kind of just ambient droning. In a recent video, I called it Alien White Noise. And I know this is straying into the realm of sounding like I'm on LSD my own damn self, but what do you reckon alien music would even sound like? I mean, we enjoy the music we enjoy because we've evolved in such a way that we perceive sounds in a very specific way. But what happens if this hypothetical alien species experiences music with touch or with sight? Because that's an actual human condition. It's called synesthesia, and it is incredibly hard to pin down to actually meaning something because it's such a rarely occurring and wildly varied condition. But in essence, it means you see colours where there are none. Like maybe you always see the letter A as being blue. Or maybe you see loud noises as red. Just gonna move aside and let those two be on their way. But like, take your favourite piece of music and try to imagine how on earth you would convert that to a format that looks like how it sounds. Ooh, and I wonder if the lady's gonna miss fire again and spawn outside the boat. Let's find out. I suppose in my hypothetical situation, trying to communicate with aliens would be like trying to read the original version of ancient text. Oh, and she misfired again! Nice! It looks funny and now she's closer to the raft. It looks like he has an outboard geisha. And I'm okay with that idea. Anyway, if you ever studied old languages, well, other languages, especially the old ones, you very quickly learn that lots of words don't translate into English. I mean, that's why it's fun to look at the authorship and textual revisionism in the Bible, for example. Although, having said that, looking at literally any revisionism in the Bible is a fun time. If you want the best of times, ask your minister about the Gospel of Eve. And now... Back to your regularly scheduled Japanophilia. I like how I've been playing this Japanese game for years and consistently complained about the fact I don't know Japanese, but now I'm starting to learn Japanese, my tour of this game turns into hypothetical aliens versus the Bible. Also, what the hell is going on with this music? Oh, just watch, here's me talking about communicating with aliens and this is one of their greatest symphonies. Like, this is their Beethoven, or Bach, or Bad Religion, or whatever, and I've just insulted them. How terribly uncultured of me. Now, see, what you should do when encountering an alien race is show you are an intelligent life form. And you do that with a cunning use of triangles. Seriously, language and music are not universal, but maths is. A squared is always equal to B squared plus C squared. And that, 15 years later, in a hypothetical scenario wherein I am abducted by aliens, is the only practical use I have found for Pythagorean Theorem. Alright, and I'm sorry, just... kept quiet for a little bit there. You hear that weird churning in the background? For some reason, that makes me feel like we're part of a machine. I mean, I absolutely cannot explain why, but like, we're part of some Giga-esque machine way beyond our comprehension. And that churning sound is just the machinery working away above us. And we're probably some kind of stunningly beautiful woman, because that shows up a lot in uh, Geiger's work. Wait a second, are we back in the park? Oh, no we're not. But the music kind of sounds the same. I, mean, I like the ambient droning, but glitchcore less... So, hi! 
How's it going? I can't really see you up in the sky. Right there. Ah, whatever. I'm going this way. Oh! And look at the frame rate pickup! It's like I always say, game runs much faster when you don't have to render anything. I don't always say that. But I do always remark on it when such things occur in the game that I am playing. Oh, and the tops of the tunnel were falling apart. That's never a good sign. How can that happen with things like this? Like, it's a textureless rectangle. One of the easiest shapes to render in 3D. Why could I see through the seams? And how is it that this guy is entirely in one piece no matter which way I look at it? Oh, I just realized something. I have been talking about that one arrow that has a terrified human face on it. But now I come to look at it, that is the same texture as the lion's head. I mean, of course it is. Because the way this game sets up, it likes to repeat and recycle textures. I can't believe I never noticed that before. Where am I? I'm in a maze. Excellent. And it's a clear nighttime look at Happy Town. This doesn't happen very often. Shame old Trundlebed is there to sing as a song. Really could do without that, you know? Oh. <laughs> Didn't want to get stuck on the scenery again. That'd be embarrassing. Though for what it's worth, that occasionally happens in real life too. Like I'll just be walking along and my brain will lie about how far away something is and I just walk into it. Wait, I don't shoot halfway across the world. So... Actually, that can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you look at it. Oh, sorry, I'll just let these guys continue. It seems a shame to not let the buglers play their tune once they've begun playing it, you know? Yeah, alright, right, don't milk it, guys. I'm gonna go see the king and queen now. And I'm reminded of an interview I once had. Like, they built up the most important question they were going to ask, said I didn't have to answer straight away, but they needed an open and honest answer to the best of my ability. If you were to have superpowers, what would you have? Now, I says flight. Because I don't like living so far away from my friends, and it'd be great if I could just go to America, New Zealand, Japan, wherever. Especially if I don't have to deal with the TSA, if I'm honest. Note to employers, has problem with authority figures. Anyways, the interviewer says that they'd have telekinesis, because that way they could pick up stuff with their mind, including themselves, and then that way they'd get flight as a sort of a twofer. And then at this point, we start talking about Jean Grey, and the X-Men, and the Marvel Universe as a whole. Didn't get the job, but I sure did spend an hour talking about comic books. And you spooked me, young lady. I still haven't quite gotten over the inherent phobia of every humanoid shape in this game. And if I'd been in charge of programming this game, I'd have a random chance of her turning to face the player as they linked with her. Like, just to screw with people like me, who go, Whoa, wait, did you see that? Now see, initially I went, Wait, what? As the hypothetical thing that I would say, but I, I guess it works as an actual thing to say on account of the game deciding to end. I also tried to run into the Sphinx and make the game link as it ended, but nothing happened. In any case, let's have one more dream. Beginning hushed silence. And relax. I don't like waiting for something that I'm not entirely sure is coming. I mean, it's one of the reasons that Fatal Frame is so scary. There is literally no point in that game where you are safe. And the anticipation of fear is just one of the best bits. And by best I mean worst, it's a horrible feeling. And you are probably not going to do your thing, are you? Looks like no. Well then, it is time to go this way. And I think I am not, in fact, going to link on the pyramid. I'm going to go this way, walk into a lamppost. Comedy gold! I say that, I have never really found that kind of thing particularly funny. But there are two gags that are guaranteed to get a laugh out of me, right? Fat bloke falling over, and somebody trying not to laugh. And that was some stunning collision detection game. Well done. 
But I don't know what it is about someone trying not to laugh, but that is genuinely one of the funniest things to me. Like, if you've seen The Life of Brian, the scene with Biggest Dickus is funny not so much because of the dialogue, but because nobody is able to hold themselves together. I mean, I have very often said that I want to do voice acting for something. Like, I'd voice the sarcastic teapot who is a straight man, you know? But I'd be terrible, because i just fall over laughing all the time, and that is not good for recording dialogue. I mean, it's alright when it's just me giggling at my own videos, less so when it's, like, something good. And I'm not getting caught on that. Oh, no, sir. You know? I think that might very well be the first time I've done that in this playthrough. A successful self-correction. Alright, you gonna do anything today? I know we mentioned it before, but I feel like doing it again. Apparently these guys can spawn the astronaut right here beside the bar, if you interact with them in a certain way. Oh, okay. See you later, Jeff. Jeff the head. I choose to call that guy in the background. And it doesn't look like anything is going to happen. That's unfortunate. And a very good example of why you should try to avoid random elements as much as possible when designing a game. Or if you are going to do it, make it inconsequential things. I mean, it's something I'm working on. It's random whether or not it does or does not rain in certain maps, you know? And... I'm going to have to look over the footage of this in post. See if I can spot the precise point that guy vanished. I'm going to be so mad if he vanished as the astronaut appeared behind me. Oh. Okay, what did I get stuck on? Game? Are you throwing out blockades and not skinning them? Because that is... less than cool. That is room temperature. I... Don't think I'm ever going to get entirely used to seeing that. I don't know, it just gets into my head like some of the other games I'm playing, but it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty spoopy. I wonder if it's a graphical thing. Like, would it be scarier if it had a higher poly count or whatever? Man, I had a friend of mine over, and we were playing some game or other with his kid. The boy says, graphics are THE most important part of a video game. And my friend and I were so disappointed. We, we tried to explain the concept of text adventures. This kid thought we were just lying to him. I mean, I have lied to children before. It is hilarious fun. Like, I once told one of the kids I was babysitting that the conveyor belts in the supermarket are powered by crocodiles running as fast as they can so they can see some food. But I am not gonna lie about video games. Oh, and hey, ghost car. How's it going? Do you know what? I should have booted up the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That show how video games used to be. Back then, when they outright hated the people playing them. Oh, I'm sorry, you, you know, you, you, you didn't feel that dog we didn't tell you about 400 turns ago? Game over out of nowhere. That's a hitchhiker's guide for you. When I was in Canada, we went to the video game museum, and they had the hitchhiker's guide running on one of the terminals. I think many people learned a, a cruel, cruel lesson at that terminal. My host learned a cruel lesson when she played Steel Battalion. Anyways, back to England and the 32-bit era. I'm walking next to a car to see if it does anything. Well, that, that's kind of boring, so I'm not going to do that. Go back, back to Canada, I think. You guys hear about poutine? It's basically chips, cheese, and gravy, and it is friggin' delicious. And everywhere you go in Montreal offers poutine as a dish. Like, even the places you wouldn't think would offer it. Even McDonald's. Although I'm told it's not very good there, so I guess that's a global constant, you know. And now we're out here in scenic, not the violence district. Surprisingly lame name given my history. And I was talking to a friend of mine about this a couple days ago. I really like some of the place names I've come up with for my own fictional universe. Oh, can I see you through the floor walls? That is sensational. But in my fictional universe, I've come up with places like Far Away Landania, which is next to Scenic over there, and they're both next to the old country. And in turn, these countries basically correlate to Eastern Germany, Greece, and Russia. On the other hand, I did once write a series of stories about a place I referred to as Nowhere, so 
maybe I'm not quite as universally good as I would like to think. What am I doing now? I don't know. I mean, I could keep talking about fictional geography, but let's change the subject. Does that require a drum fill? I don't know. That was not my best pun. I mean, I've come to enjoy it when this game goes quiet like that, because it's a little, like, a little coin toss where I'm going to end up, you know? Natural world or the violence district. Oh, but I hear a plane, though. I'm going to stand right here where the sailor stands to see what I can see. Although the answer is the cold void of the night sky. I assume the violence district is cold. Just like how I assume that Kyoto is hot. I mean, given the fact that it has zero visual indicators and no impact on the game at all, I tend not to think about the temperatures very much when I'm playing this game, you know? <laughs> Going back to my own dreams, because I am, to some extent, making this a very long project pitch for my own published dream diary, certain places that I dream of are always hot or cold despite the actual temperature outside. Oh, and the soldier locked my controls. So, yes. Bye, game. And that long, slow fade-out is brilliant, and I love it more than I should. <laughs> anyway, join us next time for some more LSD, and until next time, goodbye.